Hey, it's Alicia Sweeney, and for my Indie 1023 sessions at home, I'm joined by Charlie Drinkwater, the vocalist behind the London Four Piece band TV Priest. Their debut album, Uppers, is out on February 5th on the revered record label Sub Pop. Hi, Charlie. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah, really good. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Thanks for yeah, yeah talking to me. Yeah. Now I have to admit, the moment that I heard your song Decoration a handful of months back and played it on the radio, I instantly mm -hmm. fell for your group and I just love the, <laughs> the post-punk aesthetic and the sass with both your look and your sound online. But then I found mm -hmm. myself that um, I didn't know anything about you. So I did like a, a deep dive online to Google you to see what you were all mm -hmm. about. And the reason I couldn't really find anything about you is because up until a year ago, you weren't really a band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's been quite quite a crazy ride. I mean, I, I'm sure it has for everyone, but. <laughs> Well, I love this, and I love that TV Priest, y'all are childhood friends, right? You've attempted mm, groups yeah. in the past, but this is the first thing that's really stuck? Yeah, yeah, I've known, uh, I've known Alex, the guitarist, since I was like six years old, and I've known Nick and Ed probably since you're about 12 or 13, and we've pretty much been playing in bands since we were like 14, 15, so... I mean, yeah, I'm like 32 now, so <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our overnight success has been quite a long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think it is about TV Priest that works for you guys as opposed to music projects that you've tried beforehand? I mean, I think I think primarily it, it, we, we've always played in, in, in bands and, and been in bands kind of generally in permeations of, with us or with other people in it but you know pretty solidly that four core contingent um and really it it was a way of like making sure that we connected as friends i think you know we bonded as as teenagers through music uh, which led us into playing and i think you know as we got older uh we perhaps maybe had less time for each other as friends so getting together and kind of making the record was very much kind of conscious effort to be like let's carve out space for that friendship first and foremost and do something that we love and there's that cliche you know everyone's got a book in them I suppose we thought we we had an album in us <laughs> um yeah yeah so it was that was that was the kind of main reason why we why we why we got back together again and kind of started making music I suppose I love that. So by day, you're a designer and an art director and you work with bands like Fontaine mm. Stacey. But I want to mm -hmm. talk about your band and making music first. Now, I heard yes, an yes. interview that you gave. You said that TV Priest was your private form of self-expression that went public. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit <laughs> yeah. more about your mindset behind this. Well, I think, I think just because we'd done it for so long and, you know, we it wasn't like we'd ever kind of given up playing music with each other it would be maybe a couple of times a year we'd get into a practice room and 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 just play some noisy songs jam play some covers um write try and write some stuff um but it was very much a kind of um i think they're two different mindsets you know when you're working with other people and collaborating with other people for other bands you know i, I ended up kind of becoming a designer and artist for other bands uh mainly because you know I, I wasn't playing music and i wanted to be involved in that community um but it's a very different um it's a very different thing you know you, you you're you're kind of putting aside like um your ego in a lot of in a lot of instances and you're kind of coming to it in a different way and, and collaborating and I suppose you're there's a lot of you in the work but there's also like a lot of someone else as it should be and you're kind of serving a higher cause I suppose in in that you're serving someone else's art so when I get together with the guys and when we started making music and stuff, it was really a way of just being like, there's no limitations on this. Like I can just, I can just make the thing that I love and, and, and not be accountable to, I suppose, to anyone other than like the three other guys in the room with me. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it, it was very much driven by that, like need to feel like you were creating and, and, and just expressing yourself in the most kind of rawest purest way um and yeah <laughs> and then it went public <laughs> yeah so this debut record uppers that's out on february 5th on sub pop records um that's pretty exciting for someone like me that that is a fan of record labels especially sub pop what's it mean to you guys to be signed to this label i mean it's mind-blowing really i mean it's like a label that i have 
revered and loved ever since I kind of started being interested in music you know it was it there's such a history of it and I think I mean it was mind-blowing to us as well you know like uh, uh, you know we've conducted most of our life as a band from our bedrooms <laughs> on zoom so it was a really weird experience you know meeting everyone from sub pop and stuff and, and kind of being at this digital remove um and 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 it kind of just happened in this really organic natural way and they're like really amazing lovely people um so it was it was wild it's absolutely wild I, I remember I got off the I got off the zoom call when they kind of started talking to us and like I was like really emotional it was really really weird I didn't because I, I just you know I suppose because we've been doing this stuff for a long time not necessarily with like outside reward that's the wrong that's the wrong word probably but you know kind of outside influence or anyone necessarily kind of kind of uh I wouldn't say taking an interest but we hadn't put it in front of anyone mm. uh, to, to to kind of have those those people and those people that have such a history and such a lineage kind of take note and say we really like your stuff is like I mean it's mind-blowing yeah, <laughs> it's amazing it's great yeah and they're great they're lovely people you know to just be a small footnote in in that label's history um is uh i mean i've already won the lottery there haven't i <laughs> yeah. that's such a special way to look at it so let's talk a little bit about uppers listening to it because i got an advanced copy of it oh, they all explores a personal political cultural experiences for you and your band mm -hmm. And you don't really hold back on that. There's themes that call out media kind of in this post-truth world. Mm -hmm. You call out the political left for not being left enough, for example. What's it like for you writing a song? I think it's I think it's really interesting you picked up on a lot of that stuff because also I think um, uh, my intention, I think, when writing is to be kind of honest and try and, you know, you, you inhabit a part of yourself that is slightly different. Uh, to your everyday you know I don't go around shouting at people that's not <laughs> that's not I couldn't I couldn't act in the same way that I express myself but I think we try and try and speak from quite an honest position and and also I think you know I wanted it to feel like a record where I you know I would say these things to my friends down the pub you know we I would have these conversations with my friends and I think it, it, it came to a point in I suppose our songwriting processes where it's like well I want to be as honest as that in my art. I want to kind of be able to say the same things in my art. Um, at the same time, I would say, you know, that the, the record isn't necessarily like a design for living or like answering any questions. I'm as confused as anyone else and fallible and hypocritical as everyone else. And I think the record tries to do that. You know, it kind of expresses a lot of those feelings, but it, it you know, it, it's, it's, it doesn't always succeed <laughs> in its message, you know, on purpose. Now for you as a songwriter, do you like keep a list on your phone and on random like pieces of paper, like um, little lyric ideas or what does that all look like for you? Yeah, I mean, I write a lot of the lyrics as well with Alex, the guitarist. Um, and um, we kind of, it's kind of weird. It could just be like, you know, uh, I'm a, I make a lot of notes on my phone or just like bits of paper all over the place. And, and Alex makes it, does the same. And I suppose it could be a headline that we see or, or we often talk about themes, you know, before we start writing songs, I'll talk with Alex and say like, oh, what are the things we're actually interested in? Is it about our kind of, you know, history or uh, our personal histories or growing up or political ideas or all of those, the city that we live in. Um, and then we'll kind of build out themes from there. And then I suppose it really comes together in the end result where in the studio, Alex will give me a watch of his, his notes and his paper. I'll take mine in and then it'll be like, we'll listen to the track and I'll kind of just collage stuff as we go. So they'll just keep running the takes, running the takes and I'll just kind of ran. <laughs> and then bless him, Nick, who is our bassist. He's also our producer. He ends up kind of mosaicing a lot of stuff together or, or saying, oh, this bit's good. Come in here and try that. So it's quite an organic process. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, talk to me about that uh, line in the song Decoration. So while I was researching it, mm -hmm. I saw that there's this certain line that's lifted by uh, Simon Cowell, the judge on Britain's Got Talent <laughs> and so many other things, especially here stateside. Will you yeah. share that lyric and the anecdote that I'm talking about? 
<laughs> yeah, it was. It's it's the line I've never seen a dog do what that dog does, and it's a kind of misremembered quote from uh, a se- uh, Britain's Got Talent, um, where I think one year a dog won it, like, like a dog that could like jump through hoops, basically. And <laughs> we kind of started using it as a bit of a. It's been a kind of running joke with us, where someone in the studio does something kind of ironically or something someone does something that's not very good <laughs> or makes a mistake will generally say like wow I've never seen a dog do what that dog does and Ed was just like we should chuck that in there somewhere and then I suppose it kind of fitted nicely with the message of the song this kind of um I suppose this kind of idea of the kind of the the, the treadmill of kind of 21st century life the kind of gamification the the, the, the upward curve of like always you know you're kind of you just got to keep going and, and that kind of thing so yeah, it was kind of, I, I like the fact that we could inject a bit of humour into it, you know, I think hopefully the record's humorous too. Yeah, no, it is. And it gets your attention. Like, I love especially playing that song Decoration on the radio because I have a feeling people that are driving around in their cars and stuff that they're like, oh, yes, and, and it sticks <laughs> with them. Like, and people may misremember that line. I've never seen a dog do what that dog does. It is, there is humour. <laughs> So, okay, so we Decoration, that's a single that we've heard from you. We've heard Press Gang as we're chatting mm-hmm. before this record's coming out. Um, yeah. With this new album being released soon, what song are you excited for people to hear that isn't out yet? Um, I'm very excited for people to hear probably, probably the last song on the record um, called Saintless. Um, it's a slightly different side to us, I suppose. Um, it's written about the birth of my my little boy and about um, some of the some of the, the the difficulties that my wife and I went through. She wasn't very well after the birth, um, and it's about that feeling of you know um, the feeling of terror and awe and excitement and love that happens you know when you have a child. Um, and it's a kind of it's kind of a love letter to both of them, but I suppose. It, it's uh, our most emotive moment on the record. And um, I think hopefully it shows a sign of things to come. You know, the, the record has got a lot of anger and frustration in it and, and humour. But, um, you know, I, I'm interested in, in in a range of emotions. You know, I think, you know, the record is very much a product of how we were feeling at a time and a place in, in the world. Um, so I'm hopeful that maybe people take away something else. It's kind of like a bit of a coda to the, to the other stuff um you know still still us and still sounds like us but has a has a slightly different um view on the world perhaps more hopeful (laughs) yeah i love that hopeful showing off our humanness and the different sides of us Mm. um wondering did you sample your child and sneak (laughs) sneak something from your child into the single he's not he's he's not got in there yet but maybe (laughs) next record maybe (laughs) just wondering now, if someone who listens to your music, I know that they can tell right away that you're a political band and here stateside in America, mm-hmm. it was a pretty big week. We're recording yep. this just two days after we swore in a new president, President Joseph mm-hmm. R. Biden. Does American politics influence your music at all? I think you, uh, I mean, I don't think you can, you can help to, to, you know, to not be influenced by, by what's happening in the States. You know, um, I think as, the UK is a particular kind of anomaly in itself and we have a history you know we have certain histories and certain kind of um things that we need to reckon with at the same the same way that you do and 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 I suppose our countries are so inextricably inextricably linked in lots of those histories you know the history of colonialism the history of oppression you know we obviously exported it you know (laughs) um so I think I think it's um I think you can't help but kind of be influenced by what's happening stateside. I think also as well, you know, um, the, the the world is more connected than ever before. And so I suppose it, it, it you know, we were obviously looking through the, the prism of a lot of kind of, um, I suppose, Western news, if you, if you want to call it that, you know, um, but um, I suppose as well, it, it, you know, a lot of the songs there deal with things like nationalism um, or, or or the march of the right across, you know, lots and lots of parts of, of, of the world. So, um, so yeah, so I think it, it yeah, a, a long, a long answer to a short question, but yes. <laughs> yes. And, and you've mentioned and hinted at as we've been chatting that you came to music with art. So by day you're mm. a designer 
and an art director. You've done work for Fontaine's DC and Leanne Le Havis. Mm -hmm. And those mm -hmm. are bands that we love here on Indy 102. Amazing. How has your work in that role bled into what you do as TV priest, whether it's an album cover or the music videos mm -hmm. for you? I mean, it helps because it means that you can be really self-reliant, you know, and, and also I've met an incredible, incredible groups of people working with, with those other artists, you know, photographers and, and video directors. And, uh, you know, it, it, it means that you have a better understanding of how to kind of work with those people and how to articulate your vision and their vision together so i think i think that's really helped our band you know uh, you know we've we've been working a lot with a, a director called joe wheatley you know and, and that feels like a really fruitful kind of collaboration and i don't think i would have been you know i would have had the skill set to kind of maintain that maybe if i hadn't been working with other bands as well so i think that's really helpful i think you know it, it, i think i think as a person i was probably a you know I as a kid I was drawing and painting and stuff m before I was making music so I think it's probably you know my first love but ultimately like I suppose like I mentioned before the reason why I got into making stuff for other people was because I wasn't playing in bands for a long time and I missed it and I missed being part of a kind of a musical community so what was my way in well I'd like make people stuff <laughs> yeah. you know What's one of the, the projects that you've worked on recently that you love or proud of? I mean, I, I, I loved working with the guys from Fontaine's DC. You know, they, they, they have really, the ideas around that record sleeve were, you know, really incredible and they stretched me. Um, that was been great. I've been working with a band called Sports Team, which was, which was great at the beginning of last year uh, through to their album coming out. Um, you know love love them and then i also work with an uh, with a with a norwegian pop artist called sigrid who um we've had a really fruitful kind of relationship over the last couple of years and and it's music that's incredibly kind of uh, different to the world i suppose that i that i originally kind of came from and the, the world that i'm you know i play music in yeah. so um yeah so uh, yeah i mean there's so there's too many great eyes to mention I, i'm really blessed in that respect that people come to me and want to work with me um you know and collaborate it's uh yeah i mean it's like i get to do something i love you know every day which is you know th again the dream i've won the lottery <laughs> right, right so congrats on this upcoming release i know you were hoping to play some kind of socially distanced <laughs> release show obviously yeah. it's cancelled <laughs> What's your mindset looking ahead to the prospect of playing a live show in 2021? I mean, <laughs> not, I'm, I, I'm remaining optimistic, but also realistic. I mean, it's really tough because also one of the primary reasons we started this band was to play shows and be out there meeting people and meeting other bands and meeting your peers and talking to people and, and, and that's been hard, I suppose, as a band, we, 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 we don't necessarily miss what we don't know so far. You know, <laughs> we've existed pretty much without playing shows. Um, but yeah, I just can't wait. I just can't wait to be out there. I think that there'll be such a level of catharsis when, when we can play and when, when everyone can play. So yeah, like I said, I'm remaining hopeful, but realistic. <laughs> yeah, I'm into that. Um, so you guys have only played one show, right? Right at, like, <laughs> yeah. right after you formed? Is, is that yeah, pretty much again? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it was about it was about a month and a half two months after we formed um we put on a show for like it was like 60 or 70 of just literally our friends we put the show on ourselves it wasn't like anything big it was just like an excuse to basically get everyone together and have a bit of a party um ah. and that was that we were due to play a couple of months like you know we were due to then play a show in february and that got cancelled and then it was just like so yeah, the last show we played was November 2019. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The last and the first show. Yeah, the first and the last, the last and the first. That's pretty on yeah. brand for, for right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before we go, how about a little a quick round of some rapid fire questions? Yes, go, okay. go for it. That All sounds right, great, yeah. Water of TV Priest. Okay, it's, <laughs> it's dinner time in London right now. What are you going to be eating? Yeah. Uh, let's say, oh man, I don't even know. Let's say mac and cheese. Let's go for that. 
hold stand by. What's, yeah. <laughs> what's the best TV series you've binge watched during lockdown or perhaps a film? Give us some recommendations. Oh, uh, there's a really great one uh, that's just started called The Great about Catherine the Great. That's really good. I think it's on Hulu in the, in the States, maybe. And a really good, my wife is is Norwegian and there's a really good Norwegian show called Occupied about the Russians invading uh, invading Norway. And it's, it's really good. Right, I've been to it. <laughs> that's on Netflix. That's on okay. Netflix. You can, you can check that out. I'll check it out. Who's your favorite TV priest? Oh, um, there's a there's an amazing TV show from the 90s called Father Ted. I'm going to go Father Ted. Oh my gosh. I was hoping you were going to say the hot priest from Fleabag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's a close second. He's a close second. <laughs> All right. Father Ted or Judas Priest? Oh, Father Ted every time. But Judas <laughs> Priest still got a place in my heart. <laughs> right. Okay. Rob Halford or Marky e. Smith? Oh, that's hard. <laughs> I mean, do you know what? That would be an incredible dinner date, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> let's go marky smith i can't i can't deny mark i can't deny mes do you enjoy the marky smith comparisons that you've been getting yeah i mean i think he would absolutely punch me though like i <laughs> i mean i personally i i i get it uh i, I you know i'm not I'm, I, I haven't got the chops though you know he's way better than me <laughs> i i saw i saw him in concert just one time actually when i lived in london uh um, oh yeah yeah it, incredible just you just kind of watch him go around and he has this had this like you know just people <laughs> that would follow him and like a really good you know core of people that would yeah, 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 yeah. make sure that he was okay all right yeah, you, you were don't know what he's gonna do <laughs> right no so true um so your, your childhood friends with your bandmates tell me a memory yeah. of you guys from your early days oh memory, or about something uh, that, some trouble that you guys got into or something <laughs> <laughs> uh gosh oh okay so one time uh alex's parents went away uh when we were about 16 so we all decided to go and stay at alex's house and uh we had a party and we spilled loads and loads of really cheap red wine all over their brand new carpet and alex got so upset that we had to go through like the phone book and find a professional carpet cleaner and we all clubbed together our like saturday money <laughs> saturday job money to get a professional carpet cleaner and it didn't really make any difference and uh yeah there's just a huge stain on the floor so that was so that was cool so yeah we weren't exactly that rock and roll i was like we spilled some wine on the floor and then we tried to get it fixed <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right, what's so some lame. <laughs> totally. What are some failed band names from your guys' past or short lived oh, bands? Oh, uh, okay. Probably the best one, uh Out Demon Out. That's when we went through a slightly kind of prog rock phase. Yeah. It's the name of uh it's the name of an Edgar Broughton band song, uh, which we shouldn't have been listening to when we were 17 years old. I mean, like you know, that's not that's not cool music to listen to then. It's cool <laughs> now, but 17, don't listen to that. <laughs> What do you do to stay positive right now? Uh, make art, I would say. It's my main main route of staying not completely loopy. Half yeah. of it's rubbish, but it's just nice to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where's the first place that you want to travel once lockdown is over? I mean, I'd like to come to Seattle and meet some <laughs> You that would be love nice. their offices. They're amazing. I've been. I've heard amazing things about it. So yeah. So um, and I've never been. You know. So I've hardly ever been to the states either. So feels like the right place to to, to make a start. Ah oh, well, I hope that uh, once you do come to the states, that you get to tour through Denver because we'd love to meet. Yeah. You same. Same. Eventually, post pandemic. Yeah. Course. Fingers crossed. Fingers yeah, crossed. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Not at all. Thank you so much for having me on. It's uh, it's been really nice to chat. It, it's amazing. I can chat to, to someone in Denver. It's great. <laughs> it is. For those of you that are watching, my name's Alicia. I can't recommend the debut album by London Post Punk Collective, TV Priest, enough. The album is called Uppers, officially out February 5th, Sub Pop Records. You can also hear me spinning it on Indie 1023 here in Denver. Charlie Drinkwater, thank you so much. Not at all. Thank you. Thanks again.